So in video seven, we're going to look at derivative graphs. So we're going to get more intense with the graph of the derivative, and we're going to use it to describe what's happening for the original function. So let's jump right in and take a look at our example. So here's our example, and this is the graph of the derivative is shown. So this is huge. In fact, if this is the derivative, I would make it very obvious to myself by putting something like that at the top. If it was the original function, that would change everything, but this is the derivative. That means this is already representing the slope of the graph, folks. Okay, so find the interval where intervals where f is decreasing. Well, if you're looking for decreasing, you might want to remind yourself you're looking for when the derivative is negative. So derivative being negative would be this section of my graph. Now, here's the interesting thing. Um, if you're looking for when the uh, derivative is negative, you really mean less than or equal to zero, um, because as long as it's not a positive derivative, it's not increasing. So anytime you see it hit the x-axis and stay negative, that whole section is decreasing. So I'm going to say it's in the negatives all the way until right here. So it's decreasing from negative infinity all the way to 2. When is it increasing? Whenever it's the slope is positive. So that would be from 2 forward. I know this seems like it's competing, but it's not because we're looking at just those intervals one at a time. All right, so let's look for any local mins. Well, you know from the last uh, few videos that a local min happens when you're decreasing and then in increasing or have a negative slope and then a positive slope. Now, on the graph, that would be a graph of a derivative would be where it goes from having a negative slope to a positive slope. And remember, minimums also happen when the derivative is zero. So the first thing I would do is look for zeros and then see if it's a minimum. This is not a minimum because it's negative on both sides. It has to change from being decreasing, which is down here, to increasing. So there's our min. So we have a minimum at, that looks like it's at, if this is one, two. Maximums would happen, again, we would first look for our derivative being zero. We have two zeros. We already know this is a min, so maybe this one. Um, but to be a max, you have to go from having a positive slope to a negative slope. This does not. It's negative, negative. So there aren't any maximums on this graph um, For if this is the derivative. Uh, find the interval where the graph is concave up. Well, the concave up would be when the second derivative is positive. Second derivative being positive would be anywhere you are. Now, this is this gets a little tricky. The second derivative means if I were to take the derivative of this, I get something positive. Well, then that would mean where the first derivative is increasing. Because you're take you're looking at now you're looking at this graph as if you take the derivative of this graph. So when I say take the derivative of this graph, I mean look at its slope. So if it's concave up, I need it to have an increasing uh, first derivative. So it's increasing until zero, so from negative infinity until zero and then decrease and then it starts increasing it looks like um, around here which this x value is 1.333 and then it increases forever for concavity you will never use brackets you always use parentheses when is it concave down that would be when the second derivative is less than zero or negative which means your first derivative would be decreasing so when is this one decreasing from 0 to 1.3. Again, non-inclusive. This is a really big deal, guys. If you have the derivative graph and you're looking for concavity, then it's like you're taking the derivative of this graph. So you're looking at it's increasing, decreasing. Points of inflection. Points of inflection when, is when you have a change in concavity. So did we have a change in concavity? Yeah, we had a change in concavity um, of the derivative, we had a change in concavity here, where I changed from being increasing to decreasing, and here where I changed from decreasing to increasing. So at those two values, see, I have a change. This was, again, this was concave up to concave down, and then from concave down to concave up. So those two x values, 0 and 1.33. That may take a couple of times watching to get... Let's try a second example and see if maybe this time you have a little bit better control. 
Again, this is the graph of the derivative. I would mark that for myself. That means this is already slope. Where is my increasing, or excuse me, where is where are my intervals of decreasing? That would be, remember, this is already slope. So when I say decreasing, I mean negative slope. Negative slope. So anything that's negative. So it's negative from negative infinity until that x value, which would be 3, negative 3, bracket. And it's also negative from here, from negative 1. And then here's OK, because it stays negative, and then goes to 4. So from negative 1 to 4. OK. Increasing would be when my slope is positive. So that would be the stuff above the x-axis, so here and here. So that's from negative 3 to negative 1, and then from 4 to infinity. So do I have any local minimums or local, local maximums? Well, again, remember, local mins is when I'm a 0 for the derivative. This already is the derivative. So my potential maxes or mins are right here when the derivative is 0. And let's see. This one is when I am decreasing and then increasing. So decreasing and then increasing would be a min. So I have a local min at negative 3. This is not. This goes from positive to negative. This stays negative, and this goes from negative to positive. Here we go. A negative to a positive for the derivative would also be a min. Maxes would, when I, would be when I go from increasing to decreasing. So right here, I go from being a positive slope to a negative slope. Um, so that would be a max, and then that's it. Where's my graph concave up? Well, concavity on the first derivative would be when the first derivative is increasing. So I'm looking for when the slope is increasing or has a positive slope. So here we go. I'm increasing until about here. I'm going to say that's about like negative 2.4. So it's concave up or increasing on the derivative from negative infinity until about maybe negative 2.4. Um, parentheses, then it decreases, then it looks like at about zero, it starts increasing again until maybe two, concave up here, then it decreases, and then maybe at like 3.5, it increases to forever. Now, I'm just estimating on the negative 2.4 and the 3.5, so as long as you're close on those, that's fine. This graph isn't perfect. Uh, when is it concave down? Concave down, if you have the derivative, would be when the derivative is decreasing. So concave down from that negative 2.4 to 0. And increasing, it's decreasing also, it looks like from 2 to that 3.5. So were there any points of inflection? Well, points of inflection would happen in, when I have a change in concavity. Um, and the points of inflection look like they happen at negative 2.4, it switches at 0 and at 2. Now, here's the other cool thing, guys. Points of inflection are maxes and mins of the derivative. So check it out. I have a max here, so I've got a point of inflection there. It changes here, changes here, changes here. So your maxes and your mins of your derivative are now the points of inflection. So I've got negative 2.4, 0, 2, and I think we called that about 3.5. Okay, so again, I'd watch these a couple of times through. I would definitely take notes about how to use the derivative graph to test for these things, like saying whether it makes the derivative increasing or decreasing or maxes or mins. Again, look through those a couple of times, then get started on the problem sets. See you in class.